today we're going to add in our high score list. So let's go to the game over layout. I'm going to add a layer, rename the first one to background. And I'm going to name my new one to list for the high score list. And then I'm going to add in a text object and I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to name this HS for high score and then score so that it's not confused with our regular score text box. I'm going to change my font to size 20. I'm going to go ahead and make mine bold. That's close to the largest size that will fit in a square. So I'm going to resize that to be five squares by one square. That should line up in the center right underneath score. I'm going to make my vertical alignment centered and my horizontal alignment centered. Now anytime you create an object, it's given a unique ID number. So this is number 37. We're going to have 10 of this same box on numbers 1 through 10. But we want our numbers to go from bottom up because the default sorting algorithm sorts from smallest to largest. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. You'll see that's 38. Next one's 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and 46. So once you've pasted them all, just make sure that they go in order with the lowest on the bottom and the highest number on the top. Then we'll do the same thing for our other two. So create one for lines. Name this HS lines. Give it the same size and font. Make sure that it is the next three boxes after your high score box. Also going to center these. Then copy and paste that as well. And last is going to be our level box. So our last text box. Also one by three. Change the font size. Center and center, then copy and paste. Once all of our text box are there, we can go to our game over event sheet. I'm going to add a new global variable first, and that's going to hold my high scores. I'm going to set this to text, and I'm going to have 30 values in here. 10 scores, 10 lines, and 10 levels. So I'm going to start off with all zeros, because this is going to be my default value if I don't have high scores already set. So I'm going to get three with commas, and then I'm going to paste it 10 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And that should give me 30 values. And don't worry about it ending with a comma. That's fine. Then I'm going to make a read scores group. And I'm going to read all of my scores from my high score text object into an array. So I'm going to insert a new object, and that's going to be an array. I'm going to name mine to score array. And it's important to get the right dimensions here. We're going to have 10 different spots, each with three different values. Depth is just to make this a 3D array if you need it. We're just going to leave it at one so that we basically have a two-dimensional array. So inside of read scores, I'm going to add a sub event. And I'm going to go to my score array, and I'm going to do a for each element. And I'm going to do for each x, y element, because we don't need the z values. Then I want to set the values of the array. So I'm going to do set at x, y. My x value is going to be the score array dot current x. The y value is going to be score array dot current y. So it's going to get the current x and y value going through the loop. And then the value we want to put in there is going to be the token at a specific spot in our string. The string we want to use is our high scores. The current 
value within that. So the index is going to be score array dot current x times three because we have scores in sets of three plus score array dot current y. That way we know if it's the first, second, or third value. And then the separator value is a comma. So I put quotation marks, comma, quotation marks, and then close our parentheses. Now because this was a text object, it's going to read this as text. So when we try and sort it, it's not going to sort it correctly unless we convert it to a number. So to convert this to an integer, I'm going to do int parentheses, and then at the end have a parentheses to match that, and then click done. Okay, so now we should have read all of our score values into our array. We can test this to see if it worked. I can scroll down to the score array, and I can see that it read in three zeros for everything. Then I'm going to add another sub-event underneath that. If I beat a score on the list. So I'm going to compare two values. I'm going to see if my current score is greater than the lowest score. So score array dot at then zero comma zero. So that would be the very lowest score. So the score in tenth place. So if it's higher than the lowest score, we're going to replace that score and then sort it. So let's do score array set at xy. I can do zero comma zero, and the value I'm going to want to put in is my score. I'm going to copy and paste that, and this is going to be zero one. This is going to be my lines. Copy and paste that, and at zero two, I'm going to put the level. After I've done that, I want to sort based on my x-axis, which is going to be the score values. Now that we've put our score in, we need to actually put it on the boxes so that we can see it on the screen. So I'm going to add a variable called index. And I'm going to put it as the next thing so that it will be set to zero right here. And I'm going to add a new sub-event. I'm going to do a system for each. And I'm going to take the high score box and click done. And this is going to go over each of the high score boxes in order of their instance number, which means it's going to start at the bottom and work its way up with the lowest score up to the highest score. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other two at the same time. So let's add another condition system. This time we're going to have to do a pick by nth instance. So we're also going to do these in order. I'm going to do HS lines, and my instance is going to be my current index. Copy and paste that, and also do my HS level object, which is text. Go back to my game over layout, select that, and rename it HS level. Go back to my event sheet, and now it should say HS level. Doing it this way, we can handle all three of them in the same event. So add action high score, set text, and I'm going to set it to score array dot at index comma zero. So index will be which number it is, number one through ten, and then zero was first scores. We'll copy and paste that. We will change it to one. Hit back, and this should be HS lines. So lines was at 1 because we put lines in spot 1. Copy and paste this. Position 2 is going to go to HS level. So we put level in position 2, so our HS level boxes will be at index 2. And then each time we go through this, we're going to have to go and add 1 to our index to keep track of the right location. So let's check to see if that worked. I was able to get a score and was able to put it on the top level. But you'll see that the next time that value is replaced. So let's go fix that. 
So now we need to put all of our scores back into our high score text object so it can be read again next time. So now we need to rebuild our high scores text based on what our current values are inside of our array. So let's add a blank sub event. We need to reset our text value to blank. So high scores, double quotation marks. That way it's reset to an empty string. And we'll add a new sub event, score array for each XY element, should be the same as this one here. And this time we're going to set value of our high scores to whatever our current high score value is. That way we'll add a new piece to it each time. And we'll add score array dot current value. And then add a comma. So we'll go through, add the score, a comma, the lines, a comma, the level, a comma, and then go to the next one. And so this doesn't run all the time. I'm going to add a blank sub event at the end that is going to disable this group. So set group active, read scores to deactivated. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that at the start of the layout to activated. So it will run one time each time we go to the game over. So we have our first score. Now let's get a higher score than that. And we'll see that it puts the new score on top and the old score below it. However, when I run it again, we'll see that all of our scores have been cleared. So now we're going to add in a local storage object. In our local storage, we want to check if an item exists. And we're going to call this thing that we're going to put our scores in, score list. I'll have that be the first thing it checks. Now when you check for the existence of something in the local storage, one of two events are going to happen. Either you're going to have a local storage item exists, so on item exists, score list, make sure it's spelled exactly the same. If the item exists, then what you're going to want to do is set your high scores to the local storage item value. So when you check if it exists, it automatically does a get. And then we can activate our read scores. Copy and paste that and change this to on item missing, which is the other possibility whenever we check for it to exist. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take local storage and we're going to set our score list to the value high scores. So if nothing exists, we'll set it to all zeros. Then in read scores, we'll need to change a couple things. So first, I'm going to add a blank sub event up to the top. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is read that value. Get item score list. Then I'm going to add a sub event for local storage on item get score list. So that means after we perform the get, it's going to wait to do everything else until we actually read the item. So I'm going to click on this first one, hold shift to the last one, and I'm going to put everything underneath that. Everything in here can stay the same, except we're going to want to copy the value of high scores back into local storage at the end. Paste that here right before we deactivate read scores. So now if we run this, we'll have our blank score list again. We'll add in a score real quick. So we now have a thousand points. And then if we close that and run it again, we will see we have our score come back. We'll add in a second value, this time of 2000. Close that and we can still run it and both of those values will be saved.